Welcome back, Facebook and YouTube. You see the rabbit hole goes even deeper. So let me hop right into this thing and let me start off by saying that in this video, I'm not trying to prove to you that the earth is flat. I have plenty videos where I've done that and there are many videos out there that you can check out if you haven't caught up to that fact. This video is for those of us who already understand that and we have moved on to explore other areas of our beautiful cosmology that has been hidden from us. If I were to ask you, do you fully trust your government? Most of you would say no. And based on that fact alone, I can ask you more questions that most of us haven't asked. And it's because these questions are deep inside of the rabbit hole. And that's exactly where we'll be going today. So question number one. This is a very popular question I get from a lot of globalists. They say, Brother Sanchez, if the earth was flat and it was an infinite plane enclosed in the spherical dome, why would they lie to us? Why wouldn't they tell us? Well, we just said that we don't trust them and we know they've been proven liars throughout history for many, many years. Based on that, if there were infinite lands and the earth stretched out beyond the quote unquote poles and there were more continents, do you think they would tell us about it? I don't think they would. I think there would be plenty benefits to hide this land from humanity. And if they can hide infinite amounts of land, this is the very definition of the Truman Show. You see, the more I research, the more I realize that the goal of most of their deception is to get us looking in the wrong direction. And often I see that at the root of all their tricks is to get us looking up into the sky instead of forward what lies in front of us. And that's what we're going to be doing today as we journey beyond the ice rings. So one thing we ought to find interesting is that just like all of the fake drawings of planets they give us to keep us looking up while they discover new lands that's in front of us, the Antarctica that they give us is CGI. It's fake if you go and try to find a real picture of Antarctica, the only thing you will find is exactly, once again, what the ancestors described. And again, I take the ancestors' word over government deception any day. The ancestors had the most accurate depiction of our cosmology, but unfortunately what we're being taught today is so far from the truth because Truth is not lucrative. The lies are what keep the people enslaved. If the truth were prevalent, the truth would set us all free. No one would rule no one. We'll all be set free with the truth and to be equal and be free to dwell upon this earth and go to and fro as we please. But what creates the matrix is all of the belief systems. At the root of all of these belief systems is the science. Science is, in another definition, one's pursuit to understand nature. Again, all of this is action. This is a verb one takes, even if you ask a question, which is the inspiration of the research or the experiment. That question leads us on a quest. So the root word of question is quest for that reason. So the question should lead to one taking an action. And that action, when one takes it, is what makes one the scientist. Because science is a field of study. And this pursuit of studying is what makes one the student. The student is the scientist, the one with the question. So... If you're not questioning everything and proving all things and doing a scientific method, you're not a scientist. You're only a believer at the mercy of one who's saying that they're a physicist or a scientist and they got it all under control and they have all the credentials. But then you will have to be trusting those who are appointed by the same people we know are proven liars and 
whenever we are faced with this situation, one good thing we can always do to answer some of our questions is go back to the ancestors. Go back to those who were honest scientists and that most of us even know by our research had a better understanding of reality than we do today with all of our multimillionaire physicists and scientists who are paid to deceive us and keep us dumbed down and far away from the truth. Not up around the North Pole because it's getting crowded up there now because they find out it's really usable, not only to live in, but militarily. But strangely enough, there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole. Folks, this is James LaFerre, the Impossible Channel, and you know what? Lady Gaga stated that she, she saw Prince Charles shapeshift in front of her. We had uh, Buzz, Buzz Aldrin uh, feeling really sick in, in the South Pole, getting back and saying, stating that there was evil itself there. And uh, we have the UN, the new UN Treaty on the South Pole where no one gets to cross it for more than 35 years. And uh, a lot of weird stuff happening, right? So, yes, of course, not to mention the extra uh, suns or moons people are seeing. And, you know, it's weird. Now, this anonymous source sent has a map. Thank you very much, Observer. It goes by the name Observer. Uh, this is just incredible, folks. We don't know what it is. But it is, you know, that we don't, we're not sure. But we feel this is the most accurate map of what seems to be the South Pole outline. I'm going to play a short interview with Admiral Byrd, which stated he crossed the South Pole and he went and he reached into an uncharted continent up around the North Pole because it's getting crowded up there now because they find out it's really usable not only to live in but militarily but strangely enough there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being and that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from middle America and it's uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that, unexplored. This is a tremendous So challenge. there's a lot of adventure left mm -hmm. down at the bottom of the world. Well, yeah. Now this is a man who was in the military, he knew everything he was talking about. He's a very wise man. He chose his words very wisely. He would never say that he went beyond the South Pole into a new continent, an uncharted one, for no reason, right? So there are proof, there are people who went to, you know, there are there's evidence, they've been going there, okay? So, folks, this is what seems to be the real outline of what we call Earth. It's big, significant, and New Zealand's played a huge part in getting it over the line. Just confirmed this afternoon, the world's largest marine reserve in one of the most remote and pristine areas on the planet. Now, let's take a closer look. Here's Antarctica. New Zealand Scott Base is here, and this is where the new sanctuary is going to be. A mass of 1.55 million square kilometres of the Ross Sea. It's known as the last ocean, mostly untouched by pollution, overfishing and invasive species. New Zealand and the United States first push for the divisive proposal, which big fishing nations like China... Russia, Japan, Chile and Norway originally opposed. Now, after years of wrangling, it's finally a done deal. And to show just what a big deal this is, here's political reporter Andrea Vance with more details and more reaction. Antarctica's Ross Sea, the world's last true wilderness. And it's going to stay that way, protected as the world's largest marine sanctuary. Children will learn about today. It's a 
truly historic um, moment. It's a massive step forward, a huge win. New Zealand and the United States led the fight, a fight that's lasted six years, with tough negotiations between 24 countries plus the European Union. I've always had a view that it would be a miracle to get 25 countries to agree. The Ross Sea is home to dolphins, whales and penguins. It's also the main fishery for Antarctic toothfish, an expensive delicacy that fishing nations like Russia wanted to stay on the menu. There could not have been a worse time to be trying to do a deal, particularly with Russia. Crunch talks on the sanctuary took place between US Secretary of State John Kerry and Russia's Sergei Lavrov last month. But the negotiations came right down to the wire, with China only coming on board in the last 24 hours. From December next year, more than one and a half million square kilometres of these pristine waters will be off limits to fishing. There's a catch, and the catch is that the protection is time limited. Yes, marine sanctuary status will be reviewed after 35 years. But it's still significant, and the story's gone global because this is the first time countries have reached a deal on a sanctuary in international waters. I think that having set a good precedent here, We'll get some other agreements in place quite quickly, but we shouldn't expect all of this to be plain sailing. It certainly won't be. It's historic because what we believe is it's the start of the protection of the high seas. And next year, three more Antarctic sanctuaries will be up for negotiation. Andrea Vance, One News. You'll, you'll see a travel announcement up, uh, from us uh, shortly uh, about the Secretary's upcoming travel. He will leave on Monday, the 7th of November. Uh, his first stop will be Antarctica, where he will have a chance to visit with uh, scientists and researchers, both at McMurdo Station as well as the uh, South Pole. He'll be the first Secretary of State and the most senior U.S. government official to ever travel to Antarctica, and he'll be there from the 10th to the 12th uh, of November. I'm just saying you can't just fly from Washington to Antarctica. No, you can't. Right. That's so, impossible. Right. Can't be so done. he's leaving. So where we are, he's we're going gonna, to Christchurch, or is he yes, going to We'll be stopping else? in Christchurch, but really the, the, the like, first stop in Christchurch will just be to follow on. Gotcha. We'll go back to Christchurch for bilateral and then And then what, uh, okay, so he's going there. What? What's he going to, what's his, what's the purpose of going there? Of Christchurch? No, Antarctica. Yeah, so uh, it's a chance to really see firsthand what is, it's, what's it's, going on with climate change research. Climate change and, and ice? Of course, yeah. yeah. Extremely difficult, if not impossible, to travel question, down there. So do you know, has he, has he voted? I understand that he has voted. In Massachusetts? Uh, I, I'm assuming it's still his home state. I, I, I can check on that, but I, I know that he right. has voted. Is, yeah. he, is he physically going to go from the, the Edmondson Station to the spot, the actual spot of the South Pole? Do you, are you yes. Aware of that? So it's, uh, it's you, you go to Christchurch, uh, it's about a five hour flight yeah. to McMurdo. Uh, we'll spend the night there um, because it's just the, the time it takes to get there and acclimatizing. Uh, and then we'll get up the next morning, and it's about a three hour flight from there to the pole. There's an actual research facility right. at the pole. Um, so he'll uh, go outside and go to that marker for the South Pole. I'm assuming so. I, I, okay. I, I, I don't know. Um, but the research, as I understand it, the research facility itself is, uh, is just a few hundred uh, meters from the it's, actual it's, pole. Yes, so we'll, still, you still have to go outside to get there, though. And yeah, I'm okay. assuming you have to go outside to get there. Okay. But, the, but the, the research facility is right there, so we will be on the South Pole. The, the foreign minister of New Zealand is going to be going with him, or is he will it, not be. So, so there's no real, like, technically diplomatic component to this trip. The, I, the I purpose for the, the, the purpose for the not. South Pole is to talk to researchers and scientists, gotcha. largely about climate change research. Say, so, can we go to Syria? Oh, just what? I mean, what specifically does he hope to achieve with this visit, and how much is it going to cost U.S. taxpayers for him to? Go look around. I, I, I will see if we can get you a, a, an estimate. I don't have that, but uh, uh, I think, you know, any basic understanding or attempt to understand climate change, you have to understand what's going on both in the Arctic and the Antarctic, especially with melting glaciers and ice and the sea level rise that can come from that. Um, and as an individual who has literally championed climate change. Uh, research and awareness uh, for decades now, uh, the Secretary is, is and will remain committed uh, to uh, in increasing the awareness and education uh, of the public about this. And he himself 
feels it's important, particularly in the wake of us entering into force now uh, in the Paris Agreement and in advance of the COP22 discussions, which will all be about implementing that agreement, that it's important for him uh, to see firsthand what, what we're learning about uh, the environment down there uh, on, on the South Pole and what information we, we can then glean from the research to make better, smarter policy decisions. Because that, in the end, as you've heard the Secretary talk about, that's really the answer here is energy policy. Uh, and he believes it's uh, it's important to go down there and, and see that for himself. Because there's some criticism that, you know, this trip is basically, you know, the Secretary wants to knock Antarctica off his bucket list and he's doing it sort of on taxpayer. Where's the criticism coming from? Or, I haven't seen that. Have you? I can, I'll send you some. Yeah, I mean, it's... I don't know how there could be criticism of this when we haven't even announced the trip. But the criticism yeah. obviously came in the last 10 minutes. It must have come in the last <laughs> five minutes. But nevertheless, <laughs> Nick, <laughs> nevertheless, uh, 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 you've traveled with the Secretary. I think you know uh, uh, how packed his schedule is. And uh, he wouldn't be making this trip, uh, or any other trip for that matter, if he didn't think it was important to advancing uh, issues that are important to our national security. Uh, and our foreign policy and climate change is and it's not just the State Department that said that the Pentagon has said it's a national security imperative uh, and that was a study two three years ago uh, so uh, given all the stakes for the planet uh, particularly for sea level rise uh, uh, but by melting ice the, the secretary believes this is uh, this is an important trip to make and it's some and it's a place that he's been wanting to go for a while now it is a lot largely weather dependent uh, and that has restricted our, our uh, somewhat our ability to, to be able to get down there. Plus, you want to get down there when, you know, there's research going on that is, that is, you know, the most relevant to what we're trying to learn. And this is a good time to go. My friends, these people are so out of touch with science that they believe rising sea levels don't matter because, in their view, the extra water is just going to spill out over the sides of a flat Earth. They're wrong, obviously. And we need to make clear that those members of the Flat Earth Society are on the wrong side of history. We are going to make Paris the demarcation point where we begin to get the job done to save the planet, period. If I say that the world is round and someone else says it's flat, that's worth reporting. But you might also want to report on a bunch of scientific evidence that seems to support the notion that the world is round. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. They, 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 they must have been founding members of, of the Flat Earth Society. They, they would not have believed that the world was round. I looked around at this flat, beautiful land, and all this sun, I just, I, I, I asked the question, how, how many days of sun do you get a year? 320. So most of us who knew the Flat Earth we're used to this map and we're used to seeing this 360 degree ice ring. This is a good map, but nothing is 100 percent. And there are other maps that we need to explore. We shouldn't just get stuck to one map or one cosmology. The best thing to do is to put them all together and try to put the pieces back to the puzzle. But in moving on, most of us is used to this map with the ice ring perfectly around us. Now this is a, in my opinion, a very good accurate depiction of the earth. However, it's a limited map and there are maps that go beyond the ice ring. And what we find is very interesting. One of those maps is the one you're looking at right now. And this is the map we'll be discussing for the next portion of this video. It was found in Hawaii. This map shows lands beyond the ice rings, and we're going to prove, based upon naval expeditions and even records from the ancestors, that as far out as you journey, you're always bumping into new continents with landscapes we can only imagine about. There's been reports of animals like the woolly mammoth being found on some of these continents. So a lot of things are going to come to light in this video. When we look at this map and we look at all these lands around it, it may explain the origins of some of the blood types of humanity, some of the quote unquote racist originations. So like I said, one of the big deceptions was to get us looking up for fake planets. Understand that all of the new discovered planets they say they've discovered is all CGI paintings and fake drawings. 
Now, we can't continue to trust compulsive liars and people who have proven to be deceivers. Their job is to miseducate you. They rule you by not giving you the truth. The truth is what free you. And they don't want you free. This is a slave system. This is a matrix. With that being said, I'm trying to give you some of the truth that has been hidden here today. This map was hidden for a lot of years. These kind of maps in ancient days will get you killed. You got to understand that one of the most valuable treasures during the time of voyaging and expedition was maps. If you had certain maps, that was more valuable than treasure. So understand that the map is more valuable than the treasure. Without the map, you don't even find the treasure. You can't even get to the treasure without the map. So the maps reveal so much in the ancient day. You got to understand that the globe is a new creation. And if the globe was a 100% depiction of our earth on a miniature scale, then we should be able to use it just like a map. There should be pilots with a globe and a cockpit flying to their destinations because that globe shows an accurate depiction of the curvature that they got to fly over and all of that. But we see that planes fly in a straight line, even with the horizon. And we also use flat maps, people. So one of the questions I get a lot is, why would they create the globe? Why would they hide infinite land? Control is the goal. To rule over you is the objective. Remember, Columbus reinforced the globe concept by proving when he supposedly discovered the Americas that the Earth was indeed a globe. This is what Columbus was supposed to prove because they thought that at some point on their trip to America that they would reach the edge of the Earth. But the edge of the Earth in their mind isn't what we were taught in Western academics. We were lied to and the globe was given to those who they enslaved. Now, what you got to realize is that everyone in Columbus time knew the earth was flat. And when they came and discovered the Americas, one of the things they did after enslaving the people on this land was take away their history and their cosmology. So one thing you got to ask yourself today, if you have any connection to those native people of this land, why do you share the same cosmology as the people who invaded it? Now, most of us say we're so conscious. We say we reach the level of consciousness where we understand our religions were used against us. Even the Western academic school system, miseducation system was used against us. We basically know everything they taught us here was a lie. But even with all of that, one thing we never question is, if the earth is flat around, we even laugh at the argument. It's something we never even get into. We question everything else. Well, I have news for you guys. That globe that they gave us is one of the things they taught us not to question the most. How did they convince most of the earth today to accept NASA's heliocentric cosmology, which was created by people like Copernicus and Eratosthenes, you got to understand that the globe was created by people who was anti-nature, anti-Mother Earth. That's why when you go back to all of the primitive cultures, they were flat earthers. When you go back to the Yoruban cosmology, all of the Native American cosmologies. Yeah, we laugh at the ancient people today. We say they were dummies for believing the Earth flat. And we accept the modern heliocentric space programs that NASA give us. We never think about, hey, if all of the stuff they teach us is real and we got so much technology out there recording these things, why have you never seen a real image of none of these things in your life? You've only seen space animations. 
find me any documentary on space in this society and I'll show you a bunch of animations, okay? You never saw a real picture of these nebulas and planets that's made of pure diamonds floating around and all of this. It's speculation. It's theoretical. You're dealing with a type of science that was corrupted years ago. Understand that science is a verb. In this society, science is given to you in a form where you either believe it or not, just like religion. The science in Western world is religion. Real science is based upon taking the action. See, when you take that action, you become the scientist. But if you never become the scientist, you will always be the believer, the one who believed the person who said they the scientists and they discovered it all. So you don't have to go do none of the research. You just take their words. You just listen to Neil deGrasse Tyson or listen to Bill Nye or listen to NASA tell you about the new planets they discovered. You see, like I said, the big deception was to get you to keep looking up at the gods they created so you don't look at nature in front of you. The true creator speaks to us through nature. The ancestors studied nature to unlock all of the secrets of their reality. We'll never unlock these secrets if we keep looking to man and deceivers and evil scientists with a fake synthetic form of science that's thrusted in the realm of speculation and belief because true science is about facts, observation, and the scientific method, experiments. Most people look at a bunch of DVDs, documentaries, Neil deGrasse Tyson, NASA documentaries, memorize this stuff. They read a few books, think they smart. They never get outside and do real research, you know. And they'll ask you how many books you own, how many books you read. But no one never asked the author of the books how many they read. So all of this is necessary that I bring up before we even get deep into this video. You got to understand how they created the whole matrix. So your science is not really science because you're just taking the words of people who are deceiving you with CGI, green screen, and a lot of trickery. But to get back into the subject at hand, why? One of the main reasons why besides the big monetary gain and all of the other reasons, because there are so many that each reason is a video in itself, but one of the reasons I just want to deal with in this particular video is the hidden land resources, the disconnection from potential human neighbors, and just the whole disconnection from where you are, what you are. And if they got you looking up for false hopes, they can control you in one area. What if I told you you were born to be an explorer? So understand that when we talk about Columbus, one of the things that Columbus did was fool the natives of this land into worshiping their gods and accepting their cosmology. Again, the natives on this land, they had flat earth cosmology. They understood that there were many neighbors and many tribes that extended beyond the ice rings. So in Columbus time, when he came and conquered the inhabitants of America, they were referring to these places as new worlds. But the new worlds had nothing to do with continents. That was the big deception. The new worlds is just exactly what it means, new worlds. And the picture you're looking at now, I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. You see, we are an earth pun enclosed in a 360 degree ice wall. But like I said, most of us flat earthers are familiar with the map in front of you, which shows no way out of this thing. And that's the deception. You see, there are openings in this ice wall, crevices and ways you can go beyond this ice wall. And it opens up into another oceans and whole nother worlds that keep going on and on and on. And you can only imagine there's been reports of plants that we never saw before. There's a lot of reasons to deceive us and hide all of this land and resources. And you got to understand that every time we turn around, the president is going to Antarctica. Some big celebrity is going to Antarctica. You name me a big name person, a politician, celebrity. Hey, they took a trip to Antarctica. But we don't hear about Antarctica. 
no one ever encourages regular people to go to Antarctica. In fact, they have a treaty that bans and prohibits you to go there, and they just passed recent laws that's even tighter. So why? Why now that flat earth and globe earth is popular that we see them passing current laws on Antarctica travel and that it's always been strict for normal people to go in that area? They are hiding infinite amounts of land and restricting us to one area based on military power. And you got to understand that the ice wall is a 200 feet wall. It's the only continent, Antarctica, I mean, it's the only continent that you actually have to climb up upon to even get on it. So Antarctica is like a step up. So to you concave earthers out there, the concave earth theory has some truth to it. When you think about the fact that we are inside of a concave type of pond based on the fact that we're mostly surrounded in an ice wall that you got to climb up is 200 feet. It's clearly an enclosure. And since you have to go down to get on the ocean and access the land, yes, we're inside of like a concave system here. And there are many of these little ponds or puddles. So there's many things we're going to be looking at here when we deal with this cosmology and the ice ring and how it opens up and exactly what is this earth we're on and what they're hiding because we're limited to one area and the North Pole is said to be a portal, a magnetic portal, an entrance to even more worlds. So when you travel inward, there's never ending discoveries in the same when we travel outward. So, yes, there's no ends to the earth. So when we hear the term new worlds, Columbus went on to discover exactly that new worlds. And what happens when they conquered the inhabitants of America or any other continent, along with the religion they forced on them, was the cosmology. Everyone's cosmology correlates with their religion. If the God of the Bible sits above us, you're dealing with cosmology if you're dealing with the above. So right there in Genesis, you're opening up a book of cosmology. And that same cosmology is sold to you in the science book from NASA and with the Big Bang. So you can deny the Big Bang but still accept it as a Christian when you accept that God. Or you can deny the Bible but still accept the God or the Bible if you accept the Big Bang. It's a big web of lies you really can't escape until you go all the way back to the root, which is the cosmology itself. OK, so now when we deal with that, we see that part of them creating the globe was important to hide this land to future generations. So here we are today having arguments about the globe and flat earth when our ancestors always understood this concept. So if you think about it, it makes perfect sense and is very convenient to a person who enslave another person and take away their true cosmology. If the people in, on this land understood infinite land and you wanted to control the future children of those conquered people in Columbus case, you wanted to make future slaves forever. But you're talking about a slave system for an entire continent of people. So you're not building a physical gate around a continent. You have to build a gate for the mind. And this is why religion is so important, because along with religion, again, comes the cosmology. So along with the Westerners religion comes the concept of the globe. This whole religion is to empower those who created it, not the ones who believe in it. But the ones who it's forced upon becomes the slaves and the ones who enforcing it becomes those in power. And they maintain a power by this belief system. So this belief system becomes the gate. All right. That they never have to build physically because it's mental. It's in your mind. So how do they convince an entire earth of people to stay slaves, to stay in one confined prison? And never even think to see what's beyond or travel beyond it. 
It's to create a cosmology that teaches them, hey, you're on a little blue ball. There's only limited land and resources. At any given moment, a cataclysm can happen. Be scared. We're running out of room. We're overpopulating because we're on a little blue ball. And there's really nowhere to go besides seven little continents. You got two ice caps at the top and bottom, you know, trapping you in. And, you know, that's it. Pretty much it. You spin there and you just keep spinning. That's it. Nothing else to look forward to, guys. All right. You can pretty much travel the entire globe in your life twice and uh, be like, man, Earth is pretty small. You really think the Earth is this small, this globe concept? Again, we have to consider the map. This map apparently was being used during the time it was created and it was being taken serious. It wasn't no joke, okay? This is a real map. These are continents that the ancients drew out. I mean, you don't make this stuff up. Who sit there and say, okay, I'm going to draw America right. I'm going to draw all of these other continents the way they are. And then let's start making up crap. You know, let's build a ring and then let's start just creating little shapes. Who create these abstract shaped continents? Who does that? Apparently, these are places that a lot of people knew existed that we don't know today. A lot of people went by this map that was hidden during the time that the globe was being reinforced. So that's a red flag. That's something we really need to think about. Again, there may be endless earth ponds and continents beyond Antarctica. Antarctica is not what they're telling us. It's not a continent. It's a ring that encloses us. And once you travel outward from the center of the earth in any direction, you will meet a 200 feet wall. Now, they show us this in a lot of movies. They even got a movie called A Lord of the Rings. They are the lords of the rings. They, they are the um, guards of the gate. They guard the gates with the Antarctic Treaty. Okay? So no one can go beyond and climb up the wall and try to go out and, and explore these continents. They'll shoot you down. Why? Why? You think your government who destroyed this earth every day really care that much about Antarctica staying natural, that they just killing people for trying to explore it. Think of how much money can be made off of people exploiting these lands and selling tourist trips to these lands. It's not worth it. They can make more money off exploiting us. Can you imagine if there's other continents out there with other governments and establishments that's doing the same thing to their inhabitants? that's happening to us and we're all don't even know that we exist based on these treaties see the way i'm starting to see our cosmos is that everything is outward outward in front of you not above you of course there's much to discover above you but the deception part of the globe deception was to keep you focusing up on their trickery so can you imagine if we're a slave race of people over here that's being exploited and that all of our work and resources has been going to another continent that they're hiding and creating sort of a kingdom while we working and slave over here in this little enclosed area that they got us confined in and they're just shipping all of our power, all of our work, all of our resources to all of these other societies that being hidden. Maybe a lot of celebrities we thought died graduated to a part of their secret societies where they fake their death, but they really just go and create their own colony on their own continent. If there's infinite amounts of continents, you really think they will let all of us just go on voyages, finding our own land, creating and establishing our own colonies? They will never do that. They're all about control. So with that in mind, I just want you guys to keep this stuff in mind. And this video is just scratching the surface to the concepts. James LaFroy here with the Impossible Channel. 
U.S. military prepares for the next frontier space war by Jim Sikuru, uh, chief national security correspondent, updated November 29, 2016. Folks, uh, we received yesterday so many emails on Gatlinburg Fire and what's really happening that I think we, we need to share this with you, right? So let's let's just put it this way. Europe was the center of the world until the 1500s. Nowadays, we believe our planet that we see on our iPhones, on our GPSs, is round. We believe everything NASA tells us, don't we? That's all about to change, folks, and that's the reason for the space war. In the back of the 1500s, they tried to conquer and eventually did the Americas. You're probably sitting in American territory right now where Indians, millions of Indians, were before. Well, we can call them, I don't know, secret organizations, whatever, right? But they hid us, they hid the Americas from the Europeans for a long time. The Chinese knew about the Americas much way before the, the Columbus, that Columbus, found out about it. Now, when Columbus, he came to the Americas, they killed, raped, and pillaged, right? Everyone, everything. And Columbus got a very good name, like, yay, he's the guy, he's, the guy, he's a good guy who discovered the Americas, right? Suddenly, the world got bigger, you know, trees everywhere, fruits everywhere. Well, we did a very good job of destroying that, just like they did it in Europe. Okay, they do it all the time. Take a look at Africa, for example. It, the ancient Egypt, it's like a desert, man. So, wherever these guys go, you can call them reptilians. They transform it into a desert, okay? Now, the map I'm about to show you and the video I'm about to show you is of a flat earth or a concave earth or a bigger round earth, okay? This map shows other districts outside of our own districts. And maybe, finally, it's time for us to rediscover the Americas. Now, who is going to be the next Columbus, right? So, if we do actually have uh, a concave Earth, like the video I'm probably showing you right now, of scientists going up there, space, uh, and the pla our planet, it looks flat, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So it's probably bigger. It can, it, it, it is, yeah, round or not, it's not much of my, I don't want to, you know, state and affirm things I don't know. I've never been out there and I've never seen a picture, a real picture of Earth a thousand kilometers away. A real picture, never. So, um, Let's say that the Earth has an unknown format, and now is the time for us to rediscover the Americas. And they're trying to get out of this district to go on to these other districts and kill all the Indians once again and uh, take away their lands. Now, if they do this, if they are actually doing this, let's say that these Indians are have high technology, you know, and that's why they have been prepping for high technology all along, you know. Let's say that they are losing the war. So what might be happening is people are taping another sun in the sky. People believe the sun is fake, right? There are people that are showing us footage and pictures of the black sun, something that has never ever been seen before. And I believe that's because of the cam trailing. Probably the cam trailing has nanotechnology in it and it's to make everything that is invisible visible. Okay, it's to uncloak alien technology. Whatever it is, this flat earth map I'm showing you right now, it depicts a blue, or I'm sorry, a black moon or a black sun. And we have pictures and footage of this black sun right here next to our sun. So we also have a picture we found on the net, on the internet, of this black sun actually eclipsing our real sun while the fake sun is setting okay and this is most amazing folks Nibiru uh, Project Bluebeam 
And flat earth, if we connect all of these things and we unite ourselves and we free ourselves from what they have been locking us inside, they're going to be very mad. They're going to be very pissed, you know. So this may all be connected, folks. Flat Earth, Nibiru, and the fake sun. Why are they using the fake sun? Because maybe the black sun is eclipsing our sun. And it occurs from time to time. And when it does, this other pinkish sun, which is from this other district, arrives closer. And that's what you're seeing next to what we're calling our sun. Okay? So, uh... This all kind of makes sense, but still, who are the people on the other side of the district, right? Who are these people they are attacking? Uh, there are many, for example, reports from people coming in like and telling me that, James, I have been seeing black helicopters, I have been seeing military everywhere. What's going on, James? Why are they heading south? So I'm telling them, yeah, they're heading south because they're going outside of the district, our district to deploy weapons and bombs, whatever. And probably you're seeing sometimes noises, weird noises coming from inside the ground that shake the earth sometimes, you know? Alisa. That's my... Yeah. <coughs> what the hell is going on? That does not sound like a fucking plane at all. And uh, th these are this is a war they're having, an alien war, and this is why they have released a space war. The U.S. The US military prepares for the next frontier, a space war. So they are uh, admitting that there are threats in space. Finally, conveniently. Right now, after the Gatlinburg fire, now I'm going to show you the emails we received from people that live in Gatlinburg and were hitchhiking in Gatlinburg when a meteor struck Gatlinburg. And suddenly, police were all over this meteor. And after two minutes, that this person saw the police uh, around the crater and all. The person ran away, and it was all hell break, broke loose. It was all on fire. And I'm showing you probably the emails right now that we got from this person. And what happened is, folks, they put the fire to cover something. It is a conspiracy, but it's way much bigger than we thought. So probably this is a counterattack from these aliens. And I'm going to show you also a footage of what we believe to be a real Titan, what the Bible depicts as Titans climbing up to the skies, probably leaving the underground, climbing up to the skies to prepare for another counterattack. So, uh, folks, this is really fucked up, man. But we've got some really awesome evidence here that, you know, we're getting it all together. We're putting it all together. And it does, it does make sense, you know. It stops uh, being confusing, okay. I'm going to leave you with the flight path from one of the Emirate flights, okay, that goes directly to this other district, bombs it, and comes back. Okay, now this is from Mike Decker, and Mike was thinking this was actually a cam trail path. And when we had a chat on Skype, I told him about this other district, either way. And so he was like, "Okay, so I have this video I want to show you. I'm gonna leave you with this video, and you're gonna you're gonna fall off your chair when you see for for yourself that they are actually flying off of our district into another district and coming back." And if you actually check where this flight is going, it checks, it matches with the map I'm showing you. Okay, it matches with the map we are showing you, you know. This plane is actually heading to one of the gates and is coming back. There's a gate protecting our district, you know. That was Operation High Jump. They went to the gate, they found out about the gate. That's it. Folks, I'm going to leave you with all this. This is too much information. So... If you're asking yourselves, James, are you telling me the Baru Planet X is not out there? It's not out there. It's in here. Okay. It's not a planetary uh, system like they're telling us. Um, now, I'm not telling you guys that space isn't real, that, you know, that there are arms like Venus, Jupiter, whatever. I'm not telling that. No, no way. No way. I'm not affirming anything. 
Okay, I just want you guys to try to connect things here with us. And it may be that Columbus is actually happening all again. You know, they're going to find, they're going to try to discover new land. You know, but to do that, they have to kill the people on that land, right? Right? What if they're super high technology, they have super high technology? So this is, this is a war, and they have just announced a space war. It's official. There are threats outside in space. So, folks, stick with us, and please do share. If you have information on this, if you have anything you want to share with, please. That impossible channel at gmail.com. We're going to be waiting for you, and see you again. Hey, y'all. It's uh, me. It's uh, November 29, 2016. I uh, <laughs> I want you to see this ridiculous spray pad, spray pattern, light pad, whatever the hell you want to call it, from uh, Emirates, a very well known and I've documented many times. Full wing, they got tail sprayers. Yeah, I want you to look at this uh, round trip here. <laughs> uh, so what kind of uh, what kind of flight pattern is this? Huh. Isn't that magical? You don't think they're aiding in this uh, geoengineering? You are crazy. I would almost bet that there is not one passenger on this flight. Look at that. How much fuel do they waste when normally you can take a little trip from over here? Come over here? Ridiculous. Let's look at uh, check out some others. We've got heading to uh, over Yellowstone right now. We got some KLM 601. Let's see what kind of pattern they took today. See now that's more normal of their spray. But anyhow, thought I'd just share that with you. Sometimes you see some ridiculous stuff going on here. And uh, yeah. That is just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Boy passengers, what were you in for? A 30 hour flight there or what? <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyhow, in the real world, that plane wouldn't even be allowed to land here. It should be shot down. Any plane spraying should be shot down. Maybe someday we'll be able to do that. So when I was taking all of this in and looking at all of these maps, like I was saying, like you think about the idea of different plant species and different other life forms, or just the different plant species alone, it started opening up new possibilities. When you think of the ancient myths, they spoke of certain plants that would give you immortality. Now, of course, these things are said to be myths, but the possibilities are open when you start thinking about the fact that there may be infinite lands out there. And when you think about the fact that every other day they're finding a quote unquote new species and we're always finding new species on this old earth. Where are these new species coming from on this old earth? The idea of infinite lands and infinite continents that stretch out will explain that. All of the militaries in the world kill each other in these wars by the thousands and millions. But the only treaty ever in existence where they all work together peacefully on, and there's just peace among them all, is the Antarctic Treaty, and a treaty that prevents us from exploring beyond the ring, outer ring, and the North Pole. There's obviously some in these places that's so important that they want to hide from us that if you were to try to venture out beyond these places on your own, they will shoot you dead before they let you find out where they're hiding. And they're telling you they're doing this because they're trying to preserve nature and preserve the earth. When these the same people that spraying up the sky, polluting the water and poisoning the water every day. Like I said, when you look at this map, the idea of plants 
that may have benefits we're yet to discover that they've already you know certain elites of you know they've already hip to it and just think about it if you look at this map the second ring that's beyond ours because you got to think of it this way there are different earth circle or earth puns for example the ice ring we teach about in the flat earth community we say is a perfect 360 circle that encloses us with no way out but this map shows different and there's been many expeditioners that have explored the ring and have found some of these openings in some of these lands that we see on this map okay you read the book the world's beyond the poles and you check out the brother king drop series i'll be sharing some of his work you'll see how this rabbit hole goes even deeper but to make a long story short there's a lot of things we can speculate on when we introduce this idea because if you look at this map, this explains who's the true lords of the rings. Like I said, all of these militaries stopping us, all of the nations of the world, though we go to war with each other in the news and they sell us this narrative, they're working together to keep us away from something very big and selling us space, got us looking up why they guard what's in front of us beyond those rings. These maps will get you killed back in ancient time. And when we bring up these maps today that we didn't create, we get mocked and laughed at and they said, oh, they was flatheads, flat earthers. These were ancient maps that were taken serious by the people. And uh, in fact, a lot of your government agencies still use these maps and they have no problem with them. So you need to take that in consideration. But when we think about these other lands and we think about the ice ring having openings, yeah, there's also a possibility that you may reach a third ice ring or eventually reach an outer barrier that when you climb upon it, there are no more openings. And what if this is like the end of our little pun where you start to now just travel an ice plane until you see another sun and you see another earth system which drops down into a sort of cavern type pun system like we're in. So this shed lights on a concave earth theory that we're in like a dish when you think of this 200 foot ice wall that when your boat reach this thing, you got to fly a helicopter onto it or either climb up on it. This the only continent that we see like this. So yes, it's, some, it's a great wall. You talk about the Great Wall of China, this trumps that, okay? This is nature's Great Wall. And we can speculate how it's made, how deep down into the ocean it go. Maybe it turns into rock. Maybe that this ice wall is actually a mountain range going around the ocean, but at the top, it turns into ice. Just like here in Nevada, the tips of all the mountains are covered in ice because this area of elevation Okay, it's colder. And maybe when we're selling toward the outer barrier, we are raising slowly, gradually in elevation. But anyway, when you make it to the edge of this thing, people say, why don't you fall off? Because you actually got to climb up. It's like a stairway, a step system. And when you step upon this ice wall, who knows? Like I said, when you start traveling outward in this ice, you reach another ocean. And there's other continents like you see in this map. And maybe eventually when you keep traveling out, what you reach an ice wall where there's no more oceans and you got to make it to a whole nother circle pond. So there's so many possibilities and I think we need to explore them all because they did a good job on stucking us to one belief and giving us the globe to hide all of these concepts that the ancients had. Now the ancients have been proven to be true above these deceivers time out the time, which leads to something else. When we think about the UN treaty, when we think about the Lords of the Rings, think about Atlantis, and I show you this map, it all makes sense that they're telling us this stuff in the movies and rub it in, in our faces. But the sad thing is that this globe is such of a hypnotic tool that if there are other lands and other family members we're yet to meet, other humans, you know, what if their governments are doing the same thing in them and they're believing in the globe and they don't know about us just like we don't know about them? 
Only thing separating it all is the belief in the globe, which balls up the map and hide all of that land. Like I said, when Columbus went to explore new worlds, that's exactly what the word means. Not new continents, new worlds, people. They went to explore new worlds. And all of the people they made slaves, they gave them a globe so the future generations will forget about all of that land or forget about the connection we had with all of those other people, all of our other family members, potentially, that's on these other lands. It goes very deep, y'all. So them giving us the globe made the earth so small that in a lifetime of a human, you can really explore the earth three times. There's plenty of celebrities that'll tell you they've been around the world and back, and they still in their 50s. They can do it again. You really think we live on an earth that small? You really think we live on an earth that small? In your lifetime, you can travel around a thing a hundred times. You really believe this? Based upon what deceivers tell you. And just the fact that they got this treaty, like I said, make them the lords of the rings. They gave you ice caps and they capped you inside of a bottle of belief with that globe. That's what those caps represent. But when you stretch it out, you go back to the ancient map, you see there's no limitations to this creation. Just like there's no limitations to the creator. There's no ends to consciousness. We say consciousness is infinite, but we have a problem with the earth being an infinite plane. I don't understand it. We say that the creator is infinite, but yet we have a problem with the creation being infinite. Okay, let's pick up the scenario. We were originally talking about the spiriting out of the two spacecraft out of Berlin before the Allies arrived. Uh, we said that they were put aboard two submarines. They spent six months at sea, and they finally landed in Argentina. Now, from that point, they were taken into Antarctica, into a section of Antarctica called Queen's Mods Land. And there they disappeared, and uh, they were not heard of for some time. Now, intelligence sources, and of course, I was in the intelligence business at that time uh, with the, the agency, reports indicated that they were in there and they were operative once again. Now, there was a major concern by world powers to go in and capture the technology and the two spacecraft, which they knew were in Antarctica. And the intelligence reports indicated that one known as Admiral Byrd was to be recommissioned and he was to be sent in there to retrieve the two saucers and also the technology and personnel associated with it. Re later reports indicated that Admiral Byrd was given eight months and unlimited funding to go in and uh, pull this thing uh, successfully off. But we also know that within eight weeks he was totally defeated. What do we know about the uh, Operation High Jump, about Admiral Byrd's expedition in the autumn of 46, the early spring of 47, to the South Pole? And this is an expedition that has been almost forgotten, and it's very hard to come up with any information about it. Uh, the few articles that were published at that time in, uh, let's say, National Geographic magazine, would not give any clue to the real intention of that expedition. However, recently we discovered a, a unique documentary film in color, one hour long, made by the U.S. Navy. It was a massive naval operation that uh, involved uh, an aircraft carrier, uh, several battleships, an armed submarine, and probably another 20 supply and battleships. Um, it involved 4,000 troops, um, uh, U.S. troops, and the rumor is that there were also British and Russian contingents uh, within these 4,000 troops. It was a massive uh, naval operation. It was not as it has been presented to the public that it was a peaceful expedition to explore the natural resources of the South Pole. 
they descended to Little America, which is uh, the place of the previous Admiral Byrd landings on the South Pole. And then they started a massive uh, overflight over uh, the whole area of the South Pole, trying to locate the German base uh, that was established there uh, almost 10 years earlier. The Germans started somewhere in 1936-37, seriously exploring the South Pole. And by the time the war ended, the rumor is that they have established a massive underground colony with at least 100 thousand um, scientists, researchers, elite SS troops, uh, children from Hitler Jugend, young boys and girls that were to become the seed of this new and uh, colony that uh, was to be built under the, uh, the, uh, uh, the principles of the um, super race selection. What was it that Admiral Byrd found on the South Pole? Incredibly enough, in an official American Navy documentary film, we found footage of what Admiral Byrd found on the South Pole. He found giant freshwater, never freezing lakes with areas around them that were uh, free of any snow. And in that film, we show footage of the uh, Navy planes landing in these lakes. But even more so, he found, uh, to his amazement, that his planes were disappearing very quickly. A lot of his planes uh, were attacked by anti-gravity devices that were operated by the Germans there, by anti-gravity saucers. A lot of them crashed into invisible barriers and disintegrated in mid-flight. This is an indication that the Germans had already perfected the force field shields and they were up and operational around the German colony at Neuschwabenland. When he was retreating, basically the whole operation lasted for one week. They started in the, at the end of February 47 and by the first week of uh, March they were through with uh, the whole operation and much, much earlier than scheduled and they departed. And in an interview at Buenos Aires on his way back, Admiral Byrd uh, made the incredible statement that the Third World War would probably be with an adversary coming from the polar regions of our planet, an adversary that has the ability to fly unobstructed from pole to pole. He was referring to the Germans at their South Polar Colony at Neuschwabenland that were operating their um, anti-gravity craft with impunity and could fly circles around the globe and of course would shoot out of the sky any of the uh, attacking American planes. So it kind of makes me wonder, like, what if a world is just a whirl instead of a W-O-R-L-D? What if a world is simply a W-H-I-R-L, a whirl, meaning a celestial body of celestial beings like our sun and stars that's going on its own revolution? Think of a record where each circle it's a different song and you put the needle on each one of those songs or grooves in the record and that's how I look at this cosmos where each little pun can be a song where life happens and that needle would be the sun and moon going around creating that hypnotic effect creating that perception of time for that particular whirl what if the farther out we go based on the fact that we can now perceive and experience more suns and more light the farther back we go. What if that increased life? What if this is the immortality quest?
They say when you journey to the center of the earth, which is the North Pole, one reaches immortality, the tree of life. What if it's the same thing going outward as above, so below? And you just being fed that energy on an intense scale based on the amplification of that light. You got the light coming from the center sun, which is in the middle of our whirl, and then the second whirl and a third whirl and you go all the way back and you able to absorb the light from all of those suns maybe that'll have some kind of effect too who knows these are things we never get to think about because all of these concepts have been balled up with the globe so the possibilities like i said become endless and it's actually beautiful when i think about it because if you can imagine yourself for example on one of these continents that's beyond our reign, you will have the ability to see our sun and your sun because there's two sun systems and a lot of Vedic cosmology supports this, that we have a sun system in our circle and when you get beyond that ice ring, there's another world because there's another sun and moon system going around their ring. So from their continents, you will have the luxury of being able to see your sun and moon and our sun and moon. Hey, maybe sometimes what we think is Nibiru or refraction and reflection or the X moons, maybe we're seeing other continents or other world systems, sun and moons. If you're looking at this map, you can see how that'll be possible. Sometimes we can glimpse into their sun and moon systems and it'll appear like we're seeing two suns or two moons when we're just looking across this plane into a whole nother earth system but that's just one possibility also that eclipses could be the result of our sun and moon and their sun and moon maybe we're yet to understand how the sun and moon really moves and that maybe somehow their sun and our sun change out sometimes maybe sometime the sun we're looking at is really their sun And the sun they're looking at is really our sun. And maybe they change out sometime and come back and forth among the systems over the ice. Or maybe these different bodies travel among this plane more than in in circular patterns is what I'm saying. Maybe there's a deeper mystery to it all. Just like we travel around and around in a circle to make it among our seven continents and our little area here. But when we want to venture outward to go out into another world, as Columbus said, then we would cross that ring. And then when we get over the ring, what would happen? We would start going in circles again in that ring to migrate among those continents. And then when we want to go to another one, what? We go outward again, and then we go in circles again to commune amongst all of the lands. So now we get an idea of exploring new worlds and how this thing can be and if we're moving that way maybe what we're calling shooting stars are stars that's on patterns that's going beyond these different worlds and different planes maybe they're transmitting uh ideas to these different puns maybe the concave earth theory is a bunch of cave systems like our earth because when you think about it we're in a cavern We're definitely in a cavern. The fact that when you venture out where you got to climb up, we're down inside of a pun. That sheds light on the concave earth theory and the fact that the word con can mean consciousness as well. So a consciousness cave. So not only the dimensions being that we're in a pun making it concave, but a cave of consciousness in each of these caves. Like I said, when you reach a certain ring where you're, worlds in and the ice start to get vast and you separate to another pun completely a set of circle systems like ours each of these puns are concaves or consciousness caves and maybe we're in a big grid if you think of a motherboard or any kind of chip that's flat with a bunch of little electrical dots passing information all on that chip And if you think of the cosmos as all of these earth puns enclosed in these spherical domes, which can be composed of a form of thought itself, we're yet to figure this out. May not even be spherical domes at all. 
may be based on the fact that, <clears throat> excuse me, based on the fact that you enter one of these worlds based on your own eyesight tune into the brightest and most central star of that system would be Polaris in our case. So if you can think of the night sky and the stars and you're traveling amongst these worlds, no matter where you go on the outer skirts of our particular ring, Polaris should be visible if it's the highest and brightest. That means we're seeing Polaris as well as neighbors in the outer ring. So if that's true, if you were to go out and out and out where Polaris is not even visible, then you would start needing another pun of consciousness or consciousness cave. And you would see their brightest stars and main features and tune into that based on your eyesight because the way we see everything converge to a point and make a triangle. So their Polaris, you would now tune into it. So maybe we're just tuning into these celestial stations and pods. Maybe the elite are traveling these spaces beyond the ice. And while they got us food like they're traveling upwards. Now this get deep. I really want to just focus on the outward experience and the Antarctic experience here. But I also want to deal with the celestial plane and the upward experience because that gets interesting as well. But to stay on subject, I want you to keep the concept in mind of all of these earth puns. Maybe the goal of consciousness is to connect all of these ideas and all of these earth systems. Because you think of the goal of the government, if this is true, it's to disconnect all of us from each other with the belief of the globe. If there's other people believing in globes, they don't know we exist. We're basically part of that 1% having this conversation about our true cosmology and real people that may be existing that we can go and make it to in our lifetime. But like I said, the matrix gets deep when you think about the globe and the fact that if everyone's believing this, we don't know about each other. And if the goal of nature is to connect us all and to combine all of this collective consciousness that's in each pun, like a network or a motherboard shares information, if you think of the old HBO introduction when the HBO movies come on, they show this type bubble wrap type setting what I'm trying to get you to see here. And this is all consciousness, collective consciousness areas. And when they all connect, this whole thing comes alive based on all of the ideas, all of the possibilities, past, present, and future. Think of earth puns that have collective science and information about this place for so long, there may not even be a beginning to us, y'all. And if we start connecting all of this information, who knows what will happen? Maybe shooting stars are passing that information among different Earth puns. The fact that we never see them come up from the horizon, that they always come straight across, they're traveling in a straight path on a plane themselves. Shooting stars are actually traveling the celestial plane in a straight line so maybe they are the messengers passing this information amongst our different consciousness puns or consciousness caves this is just my speculations i entertain but very interesting and um it start getting sad when you think about the prison that the globe creates for the mind you see you don't have to build a huge wall around the area you want to keep people away from if you convince them in their mind that there's nothing there anyway. And when you think about Antarctica, it's interesting that everyone that has ever visited Antarctica never came out on the other side of Antarctica to get back to where they left from. In other words, no one ever crossed over Antarctica like a continent and went on the other side of Antarctica to get back the way they started their journey to Antarctica. Let me make this simple for y'all. If we were on a globe and I took a trip to the South Pole that they say is a continent called Antarctica, I should be able to leave wherever I'm from headed in that direction, and I should be able to get back to where I'm from without turning around. Okay, if I'm on a globe, I should be able to go over the continent of Antarctica and over the South Pole and 
over that part of the globe and come back around circumnavigating the globe, okay, and ended up right back where I started if we were on a globe. This has never happened in the history of Antarctic expeditions. And that's something that ought to make you scratch your head, that everyone that ever went to Antarctica, when it was time for them to return back, they turned their asses around and returned the way they came. If we were on a globe, they shouldn't have to turn around and retrace their steps back to get to where they came from. They should be able to go around the doggone continent and circumnavigate the globe like they said that they're doing. But they're not doing that. They're just turning around. But you guys are believing this stuff. You can't find a real picture of Antarctica. I've looked for it, just like you can't find a real picture of the Earth. The only thing we find that's real of Antarctica is a wall of ice that's 200 feet high. And that's something to think about, people, because they are guarding this wall and they don't want you to explore what's beyond it. Like I said, they're the lords of the rings. So am I the fool for questioning why, why the need to guard it? Because if this map is real, they may be starting their own civilizations as we speak. They may be still finding land starting civilizations. Some of these people you think dead, they may be just fake their death here and went on to new lands to start civilizations. These are all things you can just speculate about, and we will speculate about them deeper and deeper as we get deeper into this series. Basically, just to let you guys know that this is a beautiful cosmology. Now, when you look at this map, if you were one of those people in the second part of this ring on one of those continents, you would be able to see your sun and moon circling above your head daily, and you would be able to look inward toward the central pole that we all share, and um, you would be able to see our sun and moon. So that's very interesting because one of the things that intrigued me about space as a child was when NASA would tell me that, there's planets out there that have 10 suns and there's planets out there that have six moons. My little mind would try to imagine what a sunset would look like on such a place. Could you imagine waking up and seeing six suns setting? This is the type of stuff NASA gave us in their theoretical heliocentric universe. But when I look at this map, I can kind of see how those ideas weren't original. And we know that most of their stuff isn't original. It's plagiarization. It's truth with lies covering it so that you will never make it to the truth. Because that idea resonates with you of a place with these many suns. It's beautiful to think about. But the idea that it may just as well be real when you look at this map and that our ancestors experienced this type of sunset based on these locations beyond the ring, now it becomes literal and something we can actually go experience, but then you can't because something called a UN treaty, which prevents you from going, and that's where flat earthers are at. Why the need for it? So it gets deeper than flat earth at this point. It gets to the point where they don't even want you to prove flat earth because if I wanted to prove the globe is real by exploring the poles and seeing if Antarctica is really a continent, they won't allow me to do that. So the only thing I can do is accept their CGI paintings and accept their science books, accept their Neil deGrasse Tysons and their beliefs and shut the hell up. But you can't go and physically explore it. The little trips that they got are just jokes for you people that say they do let you explore it. That's a lie. They take you to the small little part of Antarctica where you see a little chunk of ice and a few penguins and they turn your butt around. They don't let you go out there by yourself and just start walking out among the ice. You can't do it. So, you know, it's not like I got millions of dollars like Admiral Byrd or people funding me to go and explore this stuff. I can only go by the ancients and the maps and again, naval expeditions of people who are telling their stories. So now let's move on with this thing now that we got all of that out the way. I 
think I've figured out Antarctica. Look at how they show you. If you look down here, it's at 63 degrees south of the equator. And the tip here is at 55 degrees south. But here's what I think they're doing. I had an epiphany and thought I will make a video, possibly title it Antarctica Solved? Question mark. So here we go. What I've done is basically superimposed a flat earth map over a screenshot of the globe here. And look what happens when you put it on the map. This, by the way, is, if you're new to my channel, this is the John George Abazad map. 1920, it's in the public domain. Uh, everybody is free to download it. I'm a little bit partial to this one simply because none of the main channels are really talking about it. Again, if you're new to my channel, Abazad, he was kind of a major flat earth player back in Boston. And, and actually, Boston was a hotbed of flat earth activity in the early 1900s. And Abazad wrote the book, The Enlightenment of the World. I have a, a short video of how to download it as a PDF file to freely distribute and share. We've also found that Abazad, this is not confirmed yet, but there, his great-grandson posted in a forum that his great-grandfather, John George Abazad, he knew the explorer Robert Peary, which is a huge, huge deal. We've speculated that if Abazad knew Peary personally played poker with him, Peary may have helped him make this map and write that book. Peary would have known about this ice ring, and Abazad actually claimed to be the president of a uh, Zetetic organization at one point. I've documented a lot of this in some of my earlier videos, for those who are new. There's a four-part video series on John George Abazad in this map. There's claims that Richard Byrd, he gave his book and map to, and Richard Byrd wrote him a, lo a note saying, thanking him for the book and map and saying, I'm sure it'll prove to be very interesting or some something like that. I'm paraphrasing, but... So he has allegedly had ties to some of the big name explorers, including Sir Hubert Wilkins, the first man in the history of the world to fly an airplane over, quote-unquote, continent of Antarctica. History is all but forgotten, Sir Hubert Wilkins. He has incredibly historic significance. The wilkins Hurst expeditions, there were two by airplane in the Antarctic, and one at the North Pole by submarine. And just look at the scale of this. Does it, South America does not take up you know, half the globe, for crying out loud. So don't pay much attention to the uh, the scale here. But I do believe the scale of Antarctica is pretty close. As I said, it was... Look at the... Uh, this is south of the equator. 60... It's, that's, that's right about at 63 degrees. And look at this. The continent of Antarctica. I'm going to get a... See if I can get a closer look at this. Actually, I, I will pull it up and um, and show you. Let me hold on. Pause this. How do I pause this video? Okay, here we go. So here's what I think is going on with Antarctica. And Wilkins from taking his airplane from the Shetlands, South Shetlands here. Uh, Deception Island is around here somewhere, and I, I think they were on a boat carrying the uh, Vega propeller plane. They dropped it in the water with pontoons instead of uh, skis because there wasn't enough ice, so they switched it out and uh, made it into a pontoon propeller plane. The Lockheed Vega 
I believe it had a range of about 1,500 miles or so, which means he could have flown 750 miles up and 750 back. I believe that's what what's what's transpired here. Some the firmament is somewhere somewhere here. I have two theories. Sort of uh, had an epiphany about how we are being played as fools, if you will. I think this is how they're doing it. They're just basically playing this off as Antarctica right here. Uh, because there's thousands and thousands of tourist pictures. You know, the cruises take you over here. And I, I think the Australian flights take you, like, over here or something. I, I, I'm i not sure. They take you over the magnetic South Pole, and and they take you over Mount Erebus, the volcano, the only active volcano, uh, allegedly, on the continent. There is a company in Australia, the only company in the world that flies tourists over, quote-unquote, Antarctica. They're not venturing into the interior section here. They just go and, you know, they do little long sweeping figure eights over... But they don't go too far in inland. This is basically how I see it. According to the map, this entire section is ice all the way around, all the way around the, the south, the, the outer south circle. This is how they're doing it, I believe. Or it could be just a continent like this that's just sitting on the outer, out, the outer ring. The firmament, I believe, is, is here. Right here, and I think there are, there may be little islands scattered around. Uh, and that's the little island, the firmament picture of the little island, if you knew. Go back and look at the, uh, four part series of videos. Uh, there's a, an island. I believe it's mislabeled as Smith Island just to throw us off. But I believe the island is right up against the dome, and it's a little island somewhere around the outer ice ring. I mean, I, I spent the last couple of months trying to figure out, you know, how are they pulling this off if the Earth is not a globe, and assuming that, you know, some of these flat Earth maps are correct, uh, when, you know, they're showing the, um, the outer, uh, the outer ice ring, you know, so here's what I've come up with. Uh, basically, I, I took a screenshot of Google Earth and saved it as a picture, a JPEG, and then went into my photo editing. And uh, it took me about 10 minutes to overlay the flat Earth map over uh, a picture of Google Earth to present to you what I think is, uh, you know, it may be what's going on with Antarctica. I mean, it's just kind of like a possibility. A couple of possibilities, but I'll go ahead and show this to you now and, and see what you think. Okay, here it is. My uh, attempt at superimposing a picture of the flat Earth map. I used, uh, let's see, where is it? Here it is. I used this map basically to superimpose it over this picture of Google Earth, this image, I basically, obviously, I flipped it upside down, but don't, don't really pay much attention to the, the scale is really, it's not really correct. Um, but, as you'll see, the scale is pretty, pretty close here, uh, with the peninsula and this, the tip of South America is, is pretty close. Let me show you. Here's what I'm talking about. On this particular flat earth map, he, he didn't draw the comments, he just kind of labels them and places them where, about where they should be. So, for example, he lists Alaska here. North America, Greenland, Europe, Syria, Africa, Asia, Australia down here. Cape Colony is uh, South Africa. Um, and then what I wanted to focus on is South America and Antarctica. So when you take this image of the globe and you turn it so that Antarctica is up here and superimpose this map over it, you can see that 
the peninsula, the tip of the peninsula is at 63 degrees south. So, I mean, this is very close on Google Earth. If you hover your mouse on Google Earth and you over the tip of the peninsula, you'll see it says it's about 63 degrees south, which is right around where Abizad says, you know, this is right around 63 degrees south. So Abizad says on the back of the map that the South Circle is dangerous to life and you cannot cross it. Um, but I think what's going on is, you know, this little, there's basically kind of a finger. And this is what people are, think is Antarctica. That's one possibility. Another is that there is a quote, unquote, continent, you know, but it's beyond 90 degrees here on the map. And it, as you can see, it's, it's up here. Um, and then the other possibility is that this ice actually stretches all the way around the entire outer ice ring of, of the entire world. So this is what we think of as the continent of Antarctica is the entire ice ring. So, I mean, we, uh, unless somebody makes a break for the, you know, heads out, which I think is pretty much all but impossible because all along the um, perimeter, you know, I think there's like 52 sign countries that have signed the Antarctic Treaty and there are many, many countries that have their little research stations all po strategically positioned all around the outer ice ring here, which on the globe, you know, it's they're positioned all around An Antarctica. So it's possible they've got them, you know, th this could be how it is. And so the Amundsen Scott, maybe it's, you know, who knows, maybe it's like here or so somewhere in, in the middle of here. They've got McMurdo somewhere, they got Palmer, and then they've got all the other countries with their bases or stations. But I also, I think there could be little islands um, if, you, if I zoom in, you can see there's water here. So I, I think basically this is the firmament here, the dome. And I think it's reflective enough to melt sort of a moat of water around the edge of the firmament to give uh, enough water for Sir Hubert Wilkins, who took off in his Vega, his Lockheed propeller plane, his Vega, on pontoons. And he landed in the water and snapped off this picture here. Well, we, we think it was him. I'm not sure who took this picture to, but this is in the Museum Victoria. Uh, I've lightened it a little bit just, you know, to uh, highlight the texture. And to me, this reminds me of, uh, you know, taking a wet beer glass and putting it in the freezer for a couple days. And when you take it out, it's like a frosty beer mug. This, that's what that texture reminds me of, like icy, an icy frosty beer mug. But, you know, that texture is not on this mountain. The texture is not on the water. It's, it's, you can see fog here. So I think if, if you pan the camera up, I think it, it melts higher up. The sun's rays melts it so it's clear, so it's see-through. It would be my guess. Um, but down here, uh, it's the sun's rays, I guess, at that angle. Um, I don't know that it would be enough to, to melt the uh, frosty beer mug <laughs> texture, nor would it be enough to melt some of these islands that um, surround the the ice ring. I, I believe there's, there's little islands that surround, and some some of them may even have uh, bases. But there's also, you know, if, if some of these bases may be here, if this is ice, so that you got bases here. Could be on this side, because it may be too cold. So I don't know, I'm just, I'm still kind of thinking, this is me sort of brainstorming, and, and uh, I kind of had an epiphany about how it could, they could be sort of um, pulling the wool over our eyes. Um, and making people think that, uh, you know, this is Antarctica. And yeah, very few people ever step foot on the interior section. I mean, you, it's very difficult to get permission. I've been reading the Antarctic Treaty. You have to have one of the treaty signing countries basically sponsor you and grant you permission. You have to have insurance, uh, rescue, backup plan, all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's, and there's uh, specially protected areas that are off limits. Here's another map. New map of the world, J. Steer Christopher, scientifically, practically, and intelligibly correct without any antipodes. <laughs> but this map also depicts an ice ring. However, I think some of the long-haul flights, the direct flights that people claim they take, you know, nonstop, I think people claiming they're on these flights, you know, they, who's to say they're, if they're flying, let's say they're flying from here to Australia. I mean, look, they could be flying over Greenland or around the north center, which is likely ice so that the pilot could say hey look out your window down below is antarctica 
So I've heard people reporting they've seen polar bears, which, you know, obviously they're polar bears are not in the Antarctica, I mean, or Antarctic, but... So that's kind of, uh, kind of where I'm at right now is, uh, I think this is sort of a working... If you ignore this, this is way out of scale. This is not to scale. The tip here is kind of to scale. This peninsula is somewhat to scale, or at least it's on the um, latitude, about the 63rd latitude line. So, and then I think, you know, this is, the tip here is kind of roughly about where it is. I don't know, it's, I haven't checked, but this is obviously not to scale. This South America does not take up the entire, anyway, so you can see North America is about here. South America's down here. When you're indoctrinated in religions such as Christianity and the likes, they give you concepts to keep you looking up such as angels and things of that nature. But when you get advanced and you say that you made it out of that type of deception, but you still haven't reached a point where you've questioned the heliocentric religion because the globe is a religion. It's based upon beliefs and theories. So with that being said, people who are globalists will attack you just as Christians do as a result of their cognitive dissonance. And this is all dealing with religion because when we're dealing with science, which is a field of study, it's a different environment. Questions are embraced. You know, um, if I'm wrong and someone comes and challenges that and corrects me in that type of environment, it's welcome because it's a scientific, innocent environment where we're just trying to understand nature in this field of study. But if it's a synthetic science like today, then you got people dropping microphones and having their ego being shown, making clowns of themselves and cracking jokes and name calling, which has no place in real science. That's all in religion. For those who either believe or not believe, if you believe, you're part of the club. you one of the chosen. If you don't believe, then you're a sinner or you're anti this or anti that. They have a title for you. Same thing in popular society, you're a conspiracy theorist. You really start exploring what that title really means. You find out that's just anyone who questions government authority. Most of us know September 11 was fake. Most of us know the moon missions were fake and etc. But many people who know these things will still tell you that they're not lying about the globe, okay? They write about that one. You see, they never telling us the truth, and whatever they're telling us, it's the opposite. So, for example, if they're telling us, look up above your head, those twinkling little stars that you're looking at, those are new planets and new places we're going to, and we're discovering new solid lands. Those of us who done our research, now we know that the stars are just luminaries that are not solid places. Now, why do they want us looking up for solid places? To keep you from looking in front of you from solid places. You got to understand the game they play. If they tell you where to look and you look there, you are falling for the deception. If they say, look above your head, we're finding land in the sky then you need to look everywhere else but above your head to find these new planets or these new earths or these new lands. Columbus and the old world went on voyages. They went in front of them, forward. When they spoke of finding new worlds, they got on their ships and they got in the sea and went forward. The whole space program that was created was to seal off Antarctica. When you start doing your research, you realize that, like I said, one of the ways it happened in the what they call the New World over here in America with Columbus on the natives is that the people on this land had no limitations to the earth in their mind. Most of the ancient people was already shipbuilders and was selling to and fro to a lot of these continents that we see on this map. And I really believe that none of this stuff was new to them. It's just being rediscovered by us today with this flat earth awakening. With that being said, one of the big reasons for the globe creation was to ball up all of that land and seal off that connection we had to all of those potential people or resources or even the concept of going beyond. I mean, think about it. 
if the whole race and when we talk about races, we talk about different people today, but the real race, when you think about it, was to discover the new worlds in this race war, all right, with these different groups of people going around to discover new worlds and establish their own colonies. This was during a free world where, hey, man, if you found the continent and you was the first one to discover this, that was yours and that was rules. You can state your claim. And there were groups of people discovering continents. I mean, there wasn't one person on a continent saying it's my whole continent. Of course not. Just think about it. You can only imagine. Maybe your whole life during this time was to just migrate and explore until you found the right continent and the right people for your frequency with you or created one or kept going beyond. Who knows? The possibilities are endless. And again, this resembles Atlantis. And we talk about um, the target symbol, Chase Bank, Arco. When you look at this Vedic cosmology, we can see that there are startling parallels to support lands beyond the poles.